I'm going to show you two ways to do it. I'm going to always tell you to do it by perfect squares because we do radicals so much in here. And if you have to do factor trees and all that, it's going to take you forever, okay? The radicals that we deal with are like root 12s, root 9s, root 16s, root 18s, root 20s. They're very small radicals, and perfect squares works great for these. Now, if it was the square root of 2,242, yeah, do factor trees. You'll never see that in trade, ever. They're always very small and manageable, but they, they happen all the time, okay? So let me do a quick review of how I do it. I'll show you the other way too, okay? So again, as you guys already know, I like to break down radicals by perfect squares. And my perfect squares is, what's my first one? Four, then, then, and then, and you could probably stop there. Very seldom are you going to get numbers bigger than that that we have to worry about. But I could go on forever. 36, 49, 64, 81, 100. Keep going on. Okay? The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 25 is 5. The only way that radicals break down is if one of these numbers go into it. That's it. If I said the square root of 14, which one of those numbers go into 14 evenly? None of them. We're done. If, there's, if it doesn't divide into it, then we're done. That's our answer. Okay. Now, if I see the square root of 20, then I ask myself, which one of these numbers go into 20 evenly? 4 does. 4 times what? What's the square root of 4? And we're done. That's how easy radicals are. Always ask yourself what perfect square divides into it. Notice I always put it first, 4 times 5, and the square root of 4 is 2. Okay? How about the square root of 28? And you'll start to notice, like, seems like 4 goes into almost everything. Mm -hmm. That's how it usually works. It's usually your 4 that does it. 4 times 7. What's the square root of 4? 2. 2 root 7. Okay. If I throw a number in front, not a big deal at all. If I have 3 times root 50, all I do is I just rewrite the 3. I just carry it over. What perfect square goes into 50? Which one of these numbers divides into 50 evenly? 25 times what? Now maybe you need to write this step down. Maybe just write that down. And then you can do the rest in your head. The square root of 25 is 5. 5 times 3 is 6. There we go. 6 root 2. 5 times 3? No. I mean 15. 15. Thank you. 15 root 2. Done. And I bet you there's a bunch of you and I say, what's the square root of 12? Oh, that's 2 root 3. Great. If you could, because I'm, tell me, I'm, trust me, you're going to work with radicals so much that eventually you get to that point where well, I can just kind of start doing these in my head. And that's great if you can. That's what we want you to do. Mm -hmm. You can't have a radical the denominator. No, we'll talk about it in a minute. Now, for those of you that like to do it by either this method or this method, you certainly can. It's just that now you're working with prime numbers. You're working with prime numbers. 2 is a prime number. The only thing that goes into 2 is 2 in itself. 3, 5, 7, 11, etc. So when I see 50, I ask myself, which prime number goes into 50? 5 does. And 5 times um, 10. 5 times 10 is 50. Well, I keep breaking it down until I have prime numbers. We're done. You circle the commons, and whatever's not circled goes in the radical. Now, if it was me, I would have said, well, 50 is 25 times 2, which is 5 root 2. Exact same answer. Okay? Try this. Try this perfect square. So I know some of you are like, I, don't, I do it this. Okay. It's just going to take you a lot longer to do everything because we do so many of them. Okay? 
Is there any questions off of anything off of your skill drill off that front page? I'll do a dividing problem with you real quick. But is there one that you want to see an answer for real quick? We can quickly work it out. You've got to be good with radicals. Not today, but starting tomorrow, bam, we got to do them all. Let me look at, here's number 15. Okay. On number 15, remember that it is never proper to leave a radical in the denominator. And what's going to happen in the next few days, I haven't decided. In the past, I always give timed quizzes. You have five minutes to, re to give me 24 answers. Well, guess what? Out of those 24 answers, 20 of them have radicals in them. But your answers are like two over root three, one over root three, that kind of stuff. Well, you're going to start just doing all that stuff in your head because you're going to do it so much. Okay, let's talk about this one. When simplifying radicals, always look to pre-reduce. I get it. I know that we're supposed to multiply everything by root 25. I don't want to do that. These are too big of numbers. What do you notice about the square root of 25? It's just five. We're done. This answer is a good answer. Sometimes there's no work to do as long as you notice that it can be reduced. Make sense? Always look to pre-reduce. What if I gave you a problem like this? I know by definition we're supposed to multiply top and bottom by root 2. But can I pre-reduce this? Can I simplify this before I even start? Does 2 go into 8 evenly? Oh, that's just root 4 over root 1. 8 divided by 2 is 4. My answer is 2. I didn't even have to work with radicals. So you need to start recognizing, and you'll notice on your worksheet, 15, 16, all the way to 20, to 18. I gave you problems that you could pre-reduce to make it so much easier to do. Okay. We'll talk about the rationalizing tomorrow. Now today, we're going to talk about the Pythagorean theorem, which is question 27 of your skill drill. Okay, so we'll talk about the Pythagorean theorem right there. Okay, more with radicals tomorrow. We'll keep working with it, and then we'll apply it to our assignments. But like I said, no radicals today. All right, are we good with that for now? Okay, well, I don't have a section to give you. Out of our book, it's chapters 13 and 14. But our book is so messed up. Like the very first day, they start to have you graph sine and cosine and tan. And like, well, isn't it good to know what those are first? So that's why you're going to see me do all these worksheets. And we're going we're gonna to kind of follow my trick book because I think it does a really good job of introducing things and moving up from that way. For us, graphing doesn't happen to chapter 4. In our Algebra 2 book, they do it in chapter 1, the very first section. I'm like, that's ridiculous. Okay, we need to kind of start off a little bit easier. So, I'm just going to call it this. I'm going to say section, uh, no, I'm just going to say trig section 1-1, because we'll just call it like our first day of trig. And I'm going to show you how to sketch angles today. We're going to show you how to add subtract angles. And we're going to show you the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. I thought we would do Sokotoa, but we won't get to it. We'll just we'll just do that tomorrow. Let's, Let's get everything else. Not do it. Oh, we're going to do it. It's going to happen. That's the most important thing. Well, this is separated here. I was going to say that looks funny. All right, here we go. Let's start with sketching angles. Everything that we do in trig, it is so important for you to draw diagrams, okay? You want to have a diagram so that you can label it and, uh, she's not here, um, so that you can label it and go to work from there. So the first thing we're going to show you how to do today is how to sketch an angle properly, okay? Let's first draw a coordinate plane, okay? What quadrant is this one again? Quadrant one, then quadrant two, 
Three. Has anybody ever wondered why it goes backwards like this? Why does it go like one? Why doesn't it go one, two, three, four like that? Why does it go backwards? It's because of trig. Trig is the reason why it goes backwards. This is zero degrees in trig. It's zero degrees, okay? As I move up, how far did I just go? How many degrees? I went 90. And then if I go again to here, how far have I gone? 180. 180. And what, what would this be? 270. And if I come back to here, it's 360. So the reason why the numbers are, are going counterclockwise is that's how trig works. Angles start here and they go 90 and they get bigger as they go counterclockwise. So it's because of that they're labeled 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, not algebra. Algebra has nothing to do with it. It has to do with trig and how we label things. Now, if I asked you to draw me a 45 degree angle, I'm not giving you a protractor to measure these. You're going to give me your best estimate, okay? And um, every angle is going to relatively look the same. Again, we're more about sketching things so that we can label them and go to work from there, okay? But every angle will always start at the origin and it always starts on the positive x-axis. This is called the initial side. No matter what angle I ask you to draw, it'll always start there. Well, if I want you to sketch me a 45 degree angle, just kind of think about it. This is 90, isn't 45 about half the distance? That looks like a 45 degree angle. Now, am I gonna measure it on a protractor like on your test? Absolutely not. I'm gonna look at it and say, yep, that looks close enough. Now, if this is your 45 degree angle, yeah, I'm gonna mark that wrong. Okay, that's like a 15 degree angle. Okay, so just kind of estimate it. Now, this is called the terminal side. So every angle has an initial side and a terminal side. It terminates. You will always show an arc to tell me which direction it was. There you go. There's a 45 degree angle. Just sketching it. Okay, please don't be this person. There's 45 right there. Like, uh, you're supposed to label this, and you're gonna do a lot of other stuff off of this angle. Use three or four lines when you draw angles, because what we're gonna do is you're gonna drop a perpendicular down, form a 90 degree angle. We're gonna figure out all these signs to figure out theta. And so we have to have room, gotta have room to do this, okay? Now, here's all I need to see, by the way. Let's just do a couple real quick. 120 degree angle, okay? So I don't draw a coordinate plane, I just do this every time. There you go, I know I'm starting right there. Think of this as zero positive x-axis. 120 degrees, well here's 90, here's 180, so I would estimate 120 to be like that. Again, it's just a good estimation of what it looks like. I went about 30 degrees past 90. Okay. It's just got to be close. It doesn't have to be spot on. It's just got to be close. Okay. How about this one? 300 degrees. What quadrant is it going to fall into? One, two, three, or four? Four. So here we go. So there's my initial side. Always. Always start this way. Well, here's 90. Here's 180. Here's 270. Oh, I got to go 30 past that. I don't know, I'll estimate it to be right there. There's a 300 degree angle. Any questions so far? Just sketching angles. Okay, let's mix it up now. How would you draw a 400 degree angle, you think? How would I draw 400? We only go to 360. Move four, uh, 40 degrees past 360. Exactly. How far did I go if I did this? 360, right? How much further do I have to go? 40 more. So this would be approximately a 400 degree angle. But do you see why the arc is important? If you just, if you just drew this, I would think it's a 40 degree angle. It's 400 degrees. So it's gotta go once around, 360, 40 more. Okay, 
So that's why the arc is important. Last one of these, how about, how about a 1200 degree angle? And you might see these every once in a while, a 1200 degree angle. Let's see you skateboarder, snowboarder guys. How far did I just go? How far did I go again? How far did I go again? 1080. 360, 720, 1080. Aren't guys on like snowboards doing like 1080 stuff? Like in the half pipe and stuff like that? I think they are. I think they're doing three rotations. Okay. Um, now, how much further do I have to go? I'm at 1080. I got to go 120 further. So here's, here's 90. I would estimate it to be like right there. This would be a 1200 degree angle. Any questions? So just make your rotations, 360, 720, 1080. Once you get to that point, take whatever answer, minus 1080, there you go. Okay, one last one of these. Let's mix it up even more. You're like, well, these sound kind of like sketching's easy, but then we kind of throw all these little hiccups. How about a negative angle? How would you sketch me a negative angle? Just draw the arrow backwards. 60, instead of going counterclockwise, now we're dropping. So negative 60 would look like this. So do you see again why the arc is important? Because I like, oh, they went down, that's negative. If you did, if this is all you did, maybe it was 300 degrees. That's 300. This is negative 60. They're the same angle. They're called coterminal angles. That's another day, okay? Any questions on how to sketch angles together? Okay. All right, we do a bunch of these little angles. All right, next thing. We can cross this off. Let's show you how to add and subtract angles. I wish it was this easy. What's 40 degrees plus 20 degrees? 60 degrees. Unfortunately, the angles that we deal with are a little bit more complicated, okay? Here's what your angles are gonna look like. Not always, but this could be 20 degrees. Let me just write it out here. We're gonna do angles like this, okay? Here's what this means. 20 degrees, so I'll put degrees here. This symbol, the single tick mark, represents minutes. Minutes. And the double, the quotation marks, represent seconds. Okay? I would pronounce this as 20 degrees, 15 minutes, 30 seconds. Okay? 20 degrees, 15 minutes, 30 seconds. Now, you can measure 20 degrees on a protractor, but if we're dealing like road work or engineering work or you know something that we have to be a little bit more precise, now we have to go to minutes. And if we have to be like super precise, then we have to go to seconds. These measurements cannot happen just by looking at it. You have to have special machine you know, technology to do that. If you've ever driven by when they're doing road construction, you see the guys looking through the tripods, they're measuring to the nearest minutes and the nearest seconds. Okay, that's how accurate a measurement they have to have. Okay, and it's called a transit, and that's how they get all their information. Now, what you need to know is this. There are 60, min or 60 minutes in one degree. There are 60 minutes in one degree. There are 60 seconds in one minute, right? I mean, that's common, 60 seconds in one minute. But this always throws people for a loop. There's 3,600 seconds in one degree. If I take 60 times 60, I get 3,600. So there's 3,600 tick marks in one degree. Let's kind of put it in perspective here. Remember your protractors? You guys use protractors in geometry still, right? I haven't taught geometry forever, so. On your protractor, you have 10 degrees, 
20 degrees, 30 degrees, and then you have 10 little tick marks right here. So you would read that as 11 degrees, 12 degrees, 13 degrees, 14 degrees, etc. So your protractors can do that. If I said, tell me what, tell me what 11 degrees, 15 minutes is, on a protractor, and I'm gonna blow this up, here's what it would be. Here's 11, and here's 12. There would be 60 tick marks between 11 and 12. 60 little tick marks between these two spots right there. Do you see you can't do that with the naked eye? You have to have special technology. If I added 30 seconds, there are 3,600, 3,600 tick marks between 11 and 12. 3,600 little tick marks. That's a very accurate measurement, right? I mean, that's like when you're talking about cars and they're doing like the cylinders inside the, the heads and so forth. They go to the nearest second, so to speak. Okay, they have to be that precise. And so, as you can see, these are very accurate measurements. So in TRIG, we want our accurate, our measurements to be as accurate as they can be. So we'll go to seconds, okay? All right, that's how they come about. Let's show you how to add them and subtract them now. It's really not as bad as I probably made it sound. If I asked you to add these together, you just add like terms together. You add degrees to degrees and you add minutes to minutes. Pretty straightforward. You can only add minutes to minutes and degrees to degrees. So this would be what, 32? This would be 35. There's our answer. 35 degrees, 32 minutes. Yes? So if it's like 30 minutes, you add another 30 minutes, would it be one minute? Yes, that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, are we okay with this? Pretty straightforward. Here's a question that was just brought up, and this is the hard part about these. Let's say that I gave you this problem, and I gave you this problem, and I put a, we'll put a 15 here. Okay, I want you to add them up. So add them up, 65, uh, 72. This is not an acceptable answer. Here's why. Do I have enough minutes to make a degree? How many minutes does it take to make a degree? 60. I have 65 minutes here. I have enough to make a new degree. Okay, so I would just rewrite this as one degree with how many minutes left over? Five. Is it 65 minutes the same as one degree, five minutes? Now do you see you can add these together? 73 degrees, five minutes. That's the answer I want it to be. Would you ever get a question where it would say like, like 42 degrees and 58 minutes and then a question under it that was like 30 degrees, 15 minutes and then 30 seconds? Oh yeah. So then how do you solve that? So let's just do it on this problem right here. So let's say I had a 20 seconds out there like that. Well, what number do you think would be up here if there isn't one? Just put a zero there. Now you just add them all up. Zero plus 20 is 20. This is 65. This is 72. Okay, you have enough degrees to make a minute. So this would be one degree, five minutes. So this would be 73 degrees, five minutes and 20 seconds. Okay, let's say this was 70 seconds. Do you have enough seconds to make a minute? Then you would just carry it over to that. Okay, good question. All right, here's a subtraction one. We'll do an easy one, and then we'll do a little tougher one. Here's an easy one. 45 degrees, uh, 20 minutes, minus 10 degrees, 15 minutes. Well, just subtract like you normally would subtract, 20 minus 15. 45 minus 10, done. Okay? So when it's like this, what? It's the same thing. What do you mean it's the same Look thing? Look at the thing that has the ticks. Oh, 
Mm. Thanks. Okay. Now, there's a time that you have to borrow. Here's your borrowing. 30 degrees, 10 minutes, minus 20 degrees, uh, 17 minutes. We can't do this. We can't take 10 minus 17. We don't want negative answers, okay? So we have to borrow. And here's how you borrow with degrees and minutes. I'm gonna take one degree away from here. This becomes 29. How many minutes do I have floating around now? I have 60 minutes floating around. What's 60 plus 10? Now I can do this problem. So I just borrowed to make it work, okay? So 30 becomes 29. You have 60 minutes floating around. 60 plus 10 is 70. Now you can subtract. 53, uh, nine. Done. So sometimes you have to borrow. Any questions about that? What would you do here? 90 degrees minus 10 degrees, five minutes. How would I borrow on that? Kind of answers Vanessa's question when there's not a number there. What number is there? There's always a zero, correct? We can always put a zero there. So now we're gonna borrow. This becomes 89, and what's this become? 60, very good. And now you can subtract, okay? Any questions off that? Okay, last thing is the Pythagorean theorem. I'm gonna even go faster through it because you've done it. Just gonna quickly review it with you guys, okay? And then we'll be done. See, I thought we could do Sokotoa too, but there was no way we could do that and be good. Okay, last thing I'm gonna show you, just real quick review. Let's talk about the Pythagorean theorem, okay? Remember with the Pythagorean theorem, we only deal with right triangles, okay? Our, our Pythagorean theorems are gonna be coordinates. They're not gonna be just a triangle and with the sides numbered. They're actually gonna be coordinates. Now here's what I mean. If I told you to graph the point three, four, graph me the point three, four. We're gonna go over three, right? Our X value's three, and we're gonna rise four. This is the point three, four. Well, isn't this a right triangle? And now we can find the hypotenuse by using the Pythagorean theorem, okay? Remember the Pythagorean theorem is C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Our trig book likes to do this. Instead of saying A squared plus B squared, they say X squared plus Y squared because this is your X coordinate, that's your Y coordinate. Same thing, it means the exact same thing, okay? Your hypotenuse is always the longest side, always opposite of 90 degrees. We're gonna always call that C. Just run the Pythagorean theorem, here we go. C squared equals X squared plus Y squared. Whoops. C squared equals nine plus 16. C squared equals 25. Now, let's talk about this. I know that our answer is plus minus. I get it, our answer is plus minus five. Can the hypotenuse ever be negative, you think? Can you have a negative distance? Yes. Well, a negative x at a negative y. You can have a negative x at a negative y, but your hypotenuse will always be positive. Never a negative answer. We're talking about a distance, and so we always want our hypotenuse to be positive. That's what we're doing today. Okay, in terms of the Pythagorean. Now what I was gonna have you do today, I was gonna have you do all the six trig functions off of this, but I don't think we can get that done in time. Okay, so one last one. How would you do this one? I wanna see a diagram. Again, diagrams are so important in trig, so important. Notice when I do this, I don't, I don't scale it. You don't have to make negative 12. Here's all I do. Negative 12, okay, that looks like negative 12. Positive five, there we go. Negative 12, positive five. It doesn't have to be scaled. We always form our triangle back to the origin. There we go. Do you see that it's just the Pythagorean theorem now? Because
careful of your calculators. If you have one, try this real quick on your calculator. Look what happens. Many of you are going to type this in on your calculator. And your calculator is going to say negative 144. And that's wrong. What's a negative times a negative always? Positive. Positive. Okay. When you, when you enter it like this on your calculator, your calculator's thinking that's all you want to square. You're actually squaring negative 12. Notice I put it in parentheses. Negative 12 squared, which is 144, plus 25 equals C squared. Because this morning, I was having people get negative answers. Like, that can't happen. C is 13. No radicals today. Guess what will happen tomorrow? You'll get answers like root 20. And then up here, you would put 2 root 5. We leave them in radical form, and you just work with them. No radicals at all today. Everything will work out nice and easy for you. Okay? Whew, a lot of stuff. But our goal is to get a test in before spring break, okay? Which is next Thursday, all right? So we're gonna, wherever we get to, we'll, Tuesday we'll stop, Wednesday we'll review, test on Thursday, okay? We'll probably take two to three tests off a of tray. What's that? Thursday. Skill drills do Thursday. Okay. Do you notice the next part on your skill drill is doing triangles, the Pythagorean theorem? So we just kind of talked about it. Except there might be some different ones on those. Do they ever give you the hypotenuse? Oh yeah. So I'll have to I'll talk about that tomorrow. So there could possibly be a quiz off of this tomorrow. Okay. What's that? Oh yeah. Okay, let's wait till everybody gets it. Okay, on the first section, notice it says do 35 through 44. So only have to go up to 44 there. For 40, they have a typo. On 40, that should be plus 73 degrees, 48 minutes. Plus, make that a plus yeah. sign. On number 40. 40, 40. Yep, on the very top part there. Okay, on the next section, 107 to 118, all that instructions, all I want you to do, all it's asking you to do is sketch an angle for me. Sketch me a 75 degree angle. That's it, make sure you put your arcs on those. Notice our trig book loves homework. This is problem 118 in our trig book. Okay, I mean, that's, we never do that many, but it's, our book typically goes to about 130 problems a section. It's crazy. Okay, last section. Um, all I would like you to do, I wanted you to do a bunch of other stuff. All I would like you to do is this. Sketch me the situation, sketch it, label it, and just run the Pythagorean theorem. We will use these answers tomorrow to apply what Sokotoe to it, okay? So sketch me a picture, just like this. Run the Pythagorean theorem, bam. So who knows, maybe you come in tomorrow and I say, hey, take out a piece of paper, put number 36, number 41, number 44, 109, 113, and number two. Write down your work and your answers, turn it in. That's your quiz. Yes. Do we really have to show our work from 35 through 44? Uh, I would because you're going to have to borrow and you're going to have to convert answers. I would just set it up like this Where do we and then that's all the work you show. You could put your work underneath it or on the back of it or on a separate piece of paper. Yes. On the like one through the last section. Yeah. When it says make a table, that's table that's table. if we were doing so good toe. We're not doing that. So just run the Pythagorean theorem. Hey, she wasn't here today. She was she came in my class. She never checked in. She's a TA. That's my fault. Is she gonna even pass your class? Yeah, P minus no. <laughs> then it's part of the great P minus. <laughs> Can you get P minuses? No. <laughs> Okay, I'm I do have a ton of graph paper.
Oh, up front. Oh, yeah. I know. Okay, I know. Yeah. No, it wasn't. It really wasn't that front. Oh. Um, <laughs> right. All right. If you have questions.